The topic of this video is finding the value of a function, sometimes referred to as evaluating a function. To find the value of a function, replace each instance of the input variable with the expression in the parentheses and simplify. Let's look at several problems. Given f of x equals 2x squared plus 2x plus 7, find part a f of negative 5. Okay, so this is actually a pretty simple idea. Here there's an x in the parentheses, here there's a negative 5 in the parentheses. So to evaluate a function for a new input, just replace every x that you see in your equation with negative 5. Now, when you replace something with something new in algebra, very often you need parentheses. Let's talk about when parentheses are needed versus when they are not. When do you need parentheses when replacing? When the thing you're replacing has an exponent, has a multiplier, or is being subtracted, parentheses are necessary. Let's look at an example of each one. Let's say you're going to replace this x with a new thing. Well, because the x has an exponent, then the new thing must be put in parentheses. Let's say you're going to replace the x in 4x, or the x in x times 6, with a new thing. Well, this x has a multiplier, 4. This x has a multiplier, 6. So the new thing must be put in parentheses. Let's say you're going to replace this x with a new thing. Because it's being subtracted, the new thing must be put in parentheses. Okay, great. So now that we know when parentheses are needed, we can go ahead and solve this problem. This x has an exponent. Parentheses will be needed. This x has a multiplier. Parentheses will be needed. So we'll get 2 parentheses, negative 5, close parentheses squared, plus 2 parentheses, negative 5, close parentheses, plus 7. Now, simplify by following order of operations. Order of operations says that exponents are the first thing we should do. So, what is negative 5 in parentheses squared? Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25. So we get 2 times 25 plus 2 times negative 5 plus 7. All right, what comes next? Multiplication, and we have two instances of that. So we'll do both of those. And then finally, we have addition and subtraction. Adding a negative is the same as subtraction. And adding and subtraction is always done from left to right. So we do 50 minus 10 first, which is 40, then add 7, 47. So the answer to part A is 47. All right, let's move on to another problem. All right, here we go, part B. This time we're asked to find f of negative x. Okay, so you might have noticed that for this problem we have an algebraic expression in the parentheses instead of a number, but the idea is still exactly the same. So we get 2 parentheses negative x close parentheses squared plus 2 parentheses negative x close parentheses plus 7. Exponents have to come first, so we need to figure out what is negative x in parentheses squared. Well, negative x squared is the same thing as a negative x times a negative x. A negative times a negative is a positive, and an x times an x is an x squared, so we get positive x squared. So this is going to be 2 times a positive x squared, which is 2x squared. Then we're adding a negative, so this will be minus 2x plus 7. Our final answer is 2x squared minus 2x plus 7. All right, let's do part C. Part C asks us to find negative f of x. Now, I'd like you to notice something here. In part B, the negative is inside the parentheses near the x, but in part C, the negative is outside the, the parentheses far from x. So that means that these two problems are going to give us a different answer. Remember that a negative in math is a mathematical shortcut for negative one times. So what we're really being asked to find in this problem is negative 1 times f of x. So we're going to replace the entire function with what it equals in the problem. And because it has a multiplier, we're going to put it in parentheses. So we'll get negative 1 times parenthesis 2x squared plus 2x plus 7 close parenthesis. Distribute the negative. 
and we get negative 2x squared minus 2x minus 7. All right, three parts down, one to go. We're now going to do part D. All right, part D, find f of x plus h. Well, same idea as before. Everywhere we see an x, we're going to put an x plus h, and we'll use parentheses when necessary. So we have 2, parenthesis, x plus h, close parenthesis, squared, plus 2, parenthesis, x plus h, close parenthesis, plus 7. Just as in the previous problems, we're going to do the exponent first, but here we have to be very careful. The most common error that students make at this point in the problem is that they believe that this in the orange circle is equal to x squared plus h squared. Not true. Let's do this in our side workspace. x plus h, all in parentheses squared. An exponent tells me how many times to multiply a base by itself. Notice that because of the adding here, I have to use the FOIL multiplication method to multiply these two binomials. This gives me x squared plus xh plus hx plus h squared. With math, multiplication is commutative and can be done in any order. So, typically when we have more than one variable, we'll put them in alphabetical order. Which means that our two terms in the middle are actually like terms. So we get x squared plus 2hx plus h squared. So, this part of our problem here in the orange circle is actually equal to this. All right, now we're ready to continue. Let's use the distributive property twice, here and here. Notice that nothing gets distributed to the 7. So we have 2x squared plus 4hx plus 2h squared plus 2x plus 2h plus 7. All right, now we're looking for like terms. Like terms are terms that have the same variable part. Well, this term's variable part is x squared. This one is hx, this one is h squared, this one's just an x, just an h, and no variable at all. They're all different. So what that means is that this is actually my final answer. Notice that this problem required quite a bit more algebra than the others. So when you see this x plus h, just remember, take your time, proceed slowly and carefully, and follow all the rules of math. 